Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again, and as you can see, my laundry is overflowing, and I've got a sloth on my uh, on my lap. But that's beside the point. Today, I wanted to go ahead and tell you guys that I'm finally going to be trying out Solo Cell Found in Path of Exile. Be it, it may be only for a couple days, it may be for a week, it may be until beta comes out. I'm not exactly entirely sure, but I couldn't really think of what I wanted to play for Solo Cell Found. And then on top of that, there's the whole, you know, I'm going to restart my character again when beta comes, and then restart again after beta. Um, but I decided, fuck it, you know, I'm kind of bored, there's not really too many games to play. I had fun variety streaming for a little bit, and I'll still continue to do it. But I really wanted to get back to Path of Exile, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to play. So if you guys have been watching the stream or some of the YouTube content, uh, I have hinted that I was thinking about playing a Righteous Fire Totem character, but I wasn't really sure because I've played RF Totems I think once in the past, and that was it. And as much as I love playing CI, I just don't really enjoy the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 meta. It just, it's just, I don't know, it kind of puts me off a little bit sometimes. Um, so I wanted to play a life-based character again. So, here you guys have it. I have a uh, RF self or well i was gonna say self cast but an rf totem build it's gonna be played as a chieftain and i'm gonna walk you through and explain to you guys why i kind of chose this as my character now before i go into this i don't read any guides on anything i don't know the most optimal things for solo self found i feel that by reading that and you know following what other people did it kind of ruins the whole fun and experience for myself um so let me just jump into this completely unoptimized like a noob because that's what i like to do so we decided we we're gonna play righteous fire totems purely because um, if I were to find a Tabula Rasa, for example, which I could farm, I could use a Tabula Rasa and clear pretty much like all maps up until tier eight. Uh, sorry, probably like up until even I could farm strands. But anyway, the reason why I say that is if you play a CI build, Tabula Rasa really hurts you because that's kind of where your primary, um, you know, links would go. Furthermore, um, because of the way Righteous Fire works, I have a little document here that I made for you guys. Uh, that's going to be really shit, but it's 2017, so everything's got to be fancy, right? So we're going to be using RF, Spell Totem, Ink AoE, Rapid Decay, Burn Damage, Ellie Focus. Now, I know you're going to say, excuse me, Mr. Pox Kappa, how are you going to get a 6-link if it's not a Tabula Rasa in Solo Cell Found? If I decide to not go with a 6-link, you could realistically get uh, Essence Crafted Gloves with a Delirium Essence. And yeah, I know Delirium, I may never see one. I may see one when I hit level 75, level 80, who knows? But if I were to realistically get a Delirium Essence, um, which is the, the uh, essence we used with Righteous Fire, which is the uh, socketed gems in your gloves deal 30% more damage over time, I could realistically remove Rapid Decay. So I would have RF, Spell Totem, Ink AoE, Ellie Focus, because Rapid Decay, whereas it is a multiplier, the uh, Craft on Gloves is also a multiplier, and this will pretty much make for a pseudo six link because burn damage is only an increase anyway. Uh, so that's not really a bad option. And the cool thing is, if those gloves end up rolling good, I can put a Searing Bond inside that setup as well to have additional single target um, because it is solo self found, so your damage is probably going to be shit at the beginning. So that's kind of what we wanted to do. Um, so that's kind of an option that I wanted. And the other thing is, I, n I never really use decoy totems, like fucking ever, but I think it's going to be cool to incorporate decoy totem, at least up until I do Uber Lab, because after Uber Lab, I should have pretty much everything good to go, and I won't really need it anymore. Um, but that's definitely something cool as well. I want to try out with decoy totem, and maybe even flame totem, uh, since, you know, I'm not going to be going super zoom, 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 so I may get to do some fucking weird hipster stuff. Anyway, though, enough about that shit. We ended up playing the Chieftain, and on this new recording program, I can't really show you the notes, so I'm going to read everything out loud for you. So basically, uh, Arahunu Gamamamo's uh, Moon Presence is enemies near your totems deal 8% less damage, and enemies near your totems take 16% increased physical and fire, so this is a multiplier. Note that this is also 10% placement speed, and this is placement speed as well. And then we have Tukahama's War Herald, which is totems have 50% of your armor, um, skills used by totems have a 20% chance to taunt on hit, which should not actually work for Righteous Fire totems. Uh, skills, or sorry, totems reflect 8% of their maximum life as fire damage nearby enemies hit. And your totems are immune to fire damage. I actually don't know if I'm going to get this node. I know that the whole immune to fire damage is super good, but actually I don't really think there's anything else for me to get, so I guess I kind of do have to get this. But this would work out with Flame Totem. Flame Totem would basically turn into a Taunting Totem. It kind of sucks I can't use Searing Bond and Righteous Fire Totems to taunt, but maybe if I can for some unknown bug or reason, that would be fucking badass too. 
Furthermore, you get fire damage here. Nagamu's Flame Advance gives you 35% increased damage against burning enemies, so it's just a little bit of extra damage. And then Ramako's Sunlight makes it so that I have a 20% chance that when my totems kill, wait, when you or your totems kill a burning enemy, you have a 20% chance um, for you and your totems to gain Endurance Charge. So that's pretty much Endurance Charge Generation, and then I would just use Enduring Cry on single target. And I'll probably do this, and then Uber Lab would be this, or I'll do this, and Uber Lab would be this. So I'll worry about that later. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to the skill tree, because I want to go ahead and three craft this a little bit with you guys. So I'm going to just wipe this and make it clean. So we would start off by going into Life and Armor. I don't really think there's much to do. And of course, this is theory i just theory crafted this recently so i could potentially change everything on here realistically we're going to go totem damage uh totem life totem resistance uh totemic mastery and i might put a point here because this is totem damage and um basically spells cast by totems have increased cast speed i think that'll make your righteous fire cast faster i could totally be wrong either way it's 10 percent totem damage so it's not really going to hurt me um, if I end up getting, a, I think it's called the Spire of Stone Jewel, the Spire of Stone would go right here. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the full life wheel. I'm not picking up Totemic Zeal. If I need to get it later, I will, but I do get placement speed from playing Chieftain, which is pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to move up into here, grab Sanctity, probably come around through here through Elementalist for the damage, and all res is always nice. Potentially pick up Amplify. Um, I don't know if it's probably going to scale the AoE. If it doesn't because of how RF's rounding is, I'll just remove it. We'll go across over here. I can come down and pick up Arsonist for fire damage and life regen. This is still optional. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. We're going to move down. Well, actually, technically, we would first move up into here. Now, this is not the exact order that I'm building in. I'm just kind of showing you guys a little bit of what the tree is going to be like. Because since it's solo self found, I don't know exactly where all of my... Points are going to go. I don't know what my immediate priority is. Honestly, probably getting Ancestral Bond is like number one priority. And this one also gives cast speed. So hopefully the cast speed is going to help the RF trigger quicker. Let's grab Holy Fire. Now, I hopefully am not going to need Elemental Overload for quite a while because Elemental Overload is just really annoying to use. So I'm going to get that last and we'll move down. Note that we'll pick up our Endurance Charges around when we have Ramako's Sunlight to actually start properly generating them. Then we've got Blood Magic, which I still am not too sure if I'm running Blood Magic or not because I don't know what auras I would potentially run. Um, I know I could run Purities, I have Determination. I could run Blasphemy, but I don't think Blasphemy is really very good these days. Unless you're running like a Defensive Blasphemy, then um, Temporal Chains is always pretty nice. And then Ironwood is really good because this is additional... Don't I get placement speed here as well? Yeah, I get placement speed right here. This is Totem Life and All Res, actually, so we would do that. And then you've got Bloodless over here. And the ending of the tree, I'm pretty sure all it really does is it comes across through here, grabs Shamanistic Fury with a Jewel Socket, uh, Elemental Overload, and there may be a couple more points here and there that I bump in, like the Endurance Charges. I'm also thinking of going Dual Curse, um, and I would probably use Curse on hit. Oh, I completely forgot, actually. I need Elemental Equilibrium, so this is kind of like super priority. So I'm guessing I would use something like, I don't know, Curse on hit, Ball Lightning is probably what I would do. Maybe not Ball Lightning, maybe, I don't know, Freeze Pulse. I honestly am not 100% sure exactly what I'm going to use, but I do have to uh, uh, incorporate some type of Curse on hit. Um, hopefully that Curse on hit is also going to have a high crit chance for Elemental Overload. And then for... Elemental Equilibrium. So if you guys have any suggestions for people who, you know, use Curse on Hand every so often, feel free to drop them down below because this is something I need to figure out. Although, thankfully, I don't have to worry about this right away, so that's definitely good. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. There's also a couple of uniques that I'm definitely going to aim towards, which I'm probably never going to get, but I can go ahead and throw down a list for you guys. Uh, Combs Heart would be really cool. Uh, Combs Heart, we would also, if we use the Combs Heart, we would put our Six Link in our gloves with our Delirium, so that's one option. Tukahama's Fortress is really good. It gives increased totem damage, like 40% increased totem damage with totem life with additional totem, and then for every totem you have out, I believe you gain like 300 or 400 flat armor. And then Dune Kubiari is also really good because we're most likely going to be scaling strength as we're pretty much on the left side of the tree, and that'll pretty much give us a decent increase with the 70 strength adding to flat life. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Oh yeah, also, I'm definitely grabbing Indomitable for uh, reduced extra damage from critical strikes because that'll help me against spell damage. Spell crits, specifically. And for Uber Lab. 
that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And maybe you guys can follow along as well and kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, I hopefully should be on stream in maybe like six hours or so. It'll most likely be like a night stream. But I'm out, like I said. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.